plan. Well, we're going to continue to check her pads and trim the excess fur off of her feet. Then we're going to cut her nails. We, I find a lot of um, dead hair that's knotted up underneath here. We're not going to put her through a brushing out process. It's very sensitive, so we're going to trim that off very neatly for both sanitation and aesthetics. And then we're going to take a slicker brush and we're going to brush the dead coat out of her fur. A little bit of elbow grease and work, but we're not going to shave this. It looks like she might have been shaved in the past and that can easily cause skin and coat damage. Nails. I see those nails, girly. All right, we're going to give these nails a trim. If you missed our nail trimming video, please refer back to that. Use a grinder and smooth them out. Now, if a dog is truly traumatized, you may want to go to a hand file. But, the grinder can save you so much time, and especially on a large breed like a St. Bernard, this hair doesn't get overly matted because it starts pulling on that really sensitive skin in the stomach and the upper groin and loin. Mm -hmm. Here's what we're clipping off. Clumps of hair that have just matted through friction and moisture. Uh, humidity and friction are what causes mats anywhere on the dog, but particularly in this region with the legs working, uh, the matting can be extensive and very uncomfortable for the dog. We're going to do a little bit on the stomach and the um, genital area, and then we're going to just move forward. I feel some extra matting there too. I'm not going to put her through the discomfort in this area of combing or brushing it out. Good girl. She's pretty uncomfortable with me just clipping it. There it goes. It's all gone. Good girl. I don't think there's going to be a problem with uh, brushing it out. It's so dirty because that helps keep the hair separated. It's not as tightly wound. Mm. Good girl. Yeah, the sanitary okay. looks pretty important here. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. So I'm going to use a little bit of ear cleaning solution. Just a small amount, like a half a thimbleful, as my mom would say. Take Q-tips, one Q-tip for a little dog, two Q-tips for a medium-sized dog, and we're going to do three for a large dog. Nice big ear. We're going to go down into the ear. We're only going to clean as far as we can see. Oh, so we're getting some wax. The dark, the dark that you see is wax and wax can be almost translucent to very dark and hers is very dark. It doesn't seem really dirty, it's just dark. Okay. Um, the feet, we've examined the bottom, we've checked for rocks, tar, candy, gum, chewing gum, whatever, and now we're going to take off the excess hair. This breed, by the breed standard, keeps the hair on the feet if you're going to show the dog. However, most standard, uh, most pet people with St. Bernard's, Newfoundland's, big breeds with big hairy feet like this would prefer the hair to be taken off a little bit or a lot or somewhere in between. So she's going to get a total makeover. We're going to take off a lot today. Let's try the back, the back foot. Now the back of the back foot, the hawk, has a lot of excess hair. I'm going to take off about three quarters of it. I don't want to take it all off. We don't want her to look like a little scarecrow, but we're going to take off three quarters and we're going to round her feet off neat so that she has a neater look and less chance to drag in debris from the outside to the inside. These dogs were bred and used to be outdoor dogs, but nowadays they're part of the family and the couch is probably their favorite piece of furniture. But it's nice if you have a salon that will brush your pet's teeth or even share with you how to brush your pet's teeth at home. I'm going to visually use half of this starting in the very back and brush up and down, up and down, drawing forward. Good girl, till I get about to the middle. Then I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to use the other half. Oh, she's like, oh, don't brush my teeth. Good girl. It's okay. 
It's okay. It doesn't hurt. I'm going to go in the back and brush up and down, up and down. All. Brushing, contrary to some belief, is the premier skill in pet grooming. You might think fancy trimming or all kinds of fancy scissoring is premier, but the most important skill in grooming is brushing. So, what brush do you use? Well, we have, do we use a little brush or a big brush? Do we have a little dog or a big dog? Uh, you will develop a collection of brushes if you're really into pet grooming, and I'm going to choose a big slicker brush today. A slicker brush has curved teeth, and the brush is usually curved, and this is a big one. They do come smaller, and they do come bigger. This is large, it fits my hand comfortably, and it's big enough to address this dog's coat issues, which you see there's dead coat just hanging in there. So we're going to brush. And slicker brushing, you use a pat and pull motion. You don't want to grind down onto the dog's skin or coat. You just want to gently go over the surface and get it what we call opened up. You might use your comb to pull the hair out occasionally. Once you get the coat opened up like it's standing up, we recommend you go to a line brushing method. And that's where you start at one end of the extremity and you work. It's like raking leaves. You work one row. And you don't move up to the other rows until this row is thoroughly done. And you can tell if it's thoroughly done because it talks to you. If you hear that sound of those mats scraping through the teeth, you just keep your gentle brushing motion going. Yay, that feels great. And there's the hair in the brush. Take the hair out and go up to the next level. This is line dancing and this is line brushing. Is he pumpkin? Ready for the tub? Girl. Ready to be dried, sweetie? Yeah. practice you learn that just because they feel warm doesn't mean they're dry and mm -hmm. I can feel moisture it's really just like almost microscopic but the fact of the matter is you're not just drying the coat you're drying mm -hmm. the skin and if the skin is not dry you can run into skin problems which then turn into coat problems mm -hmm. nice tail girly nice tail oh I stripped a lot up uh, that yeah well yeah. she had a really matted tail and it's like very feels very nice Nice conditioner in the shampoo. Now we can only help the outside of the coat when we put something on the outside. Her mm -hmm. ultimate therapy for skin and coat will come with her diet. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's finish up her paws. Trim a little hair on her feet and she'll be about ready to go. She'll be ready for bows. Just by not taking the regular shortcuts, going through her coat little by little and taking out the dead hair, using a therapeutic shampoo for her skin and coat, she's going to benefit from this in the long run rather than shaving her down, which can cause an exothermal reaction to such a switch from her natural coat to no coat. So we don't like to go there unless we have to. We call it a medical intervention if we have to take off the natural coat. Still, sweetie. Ready to go home?